Hey, what's going on? People, it's SGZ here from the Spartan Game Zone, and in this video, we'll be counting down the top 10 best grenade mods in Borderlands 3. Grenades are an important and often overlooked part of every great build, dealing damage, proccing abilities, and countless other things, so it's important to have the right one for your setup. I'll be explaining what each one does, how you should be using them, and of course, let you know where you can find them. If this video helped you out, I'd appreciate you helping me out by dropping a like, and if you want to help support the channel even more, you can always hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. I plan to bring you a revisited look at the most underrated legendaries in the game next, so stay tuned for that, and let's crack into it. We open this countdown of the top 10 best grenade mods in Borderlands 3 with the Hot Spring, a purely support grenade that is exclusive to Arms Race, and has an increased chance to drop from this chest. The Hot Spring is just that, a hot spring, but in a metaphorical sense. Jumping into water has been replaced with standing in a circle, as a healing zone spawns wherever it impacts. Dipping your toes in it will increase your wellness, and you don't even need to worry about getting wet. A healing effect is instant, chucking it at your feet will see a big chunk of health returned, followed by a long window of health regeneration. It's not going to compete with any lifesteal, but for characters that don't have it, it's good enough, and will help keep you alive even when you're not shooting. Moving on now to the Mustard Truck Exploder, patented of course, it can come in every element including your standard explosive, and you'll find it quickest by farming vending machines over at the Spendopticon in DLC 1. The Rusty Duck Exploder is grenades all the way down, one grenade explodes into six, which each explode into three, covering the floor in a blanket of heavy duty explosives. If you ever wanted to create your own personal minefield, then set one of these babies down and stand back. It's incredibly deadly, mainly to you, but if you can avoid 18 bouncing grenades, then there's plenty of fun to be had here, especially on moats. To mitigate its friendly fire, try getting a shock version and pairing that with the transformer, which will have it also regen your shields. In general, grenades don't deal much damage, but this is one that can, so if you're looking for something similar to Borderlands 2's bonus package, then here it is. Time now for the Hunter Seeker, which can come in every element, and has an increased chance to drop from Dragon Rage, that you fight around here in the Anvil. The Hunter Seeker isn't a grenade, instead it's a grenade shaped drone that flies about shooting at your enemies, before eventually exploding either into them, or just randomly in the air. Each time you throw one your firepower will be raised, especially if you get one with divider parts, cloning for 2 grenades and mitosis for 3. It provides you with a lot of hits, helping proc kill skills, maximize the pearl of ineffable knowledge, and much more, which is just what you need to get at full strength faster. Coming up next is the Mesma, a new grenade added as part of the director's cut, which has an increased chance to drop from the Gravekeeper, you fight around here in Enoch's Grove. The Mesma is another grenade whose worth lies completely in its effect. That effect is to turn your enemies into your friends. Yeah, friendship! Whenever an enemy gets caught in the blast, they'll swap sides, fighting alongside you for 10 seconds, and often taking all of your enemies' attention. That's a great thing, allowing you to slip into the background and demolish them without even getting shot at. Getting one with the action skill start regenerate grenade anointment will ensure you never run out, letting you go through any area without thinking about getting hurt. Like its purse, it also synergizes really well with the Rack Attack Flak with the Peregrine class mod, where you can send out your Rack to whisper sweet nothings in your enemy's ears, and have them fight alongside you. It is an awesome grenade that does a lot more work than you think. Up next is the Hex, which can only come in Shock, Radiation and Cryo and has an increased chance to drop from the Sky Bullies, 
around here in the anvil. When thrown, the hex will seek out enemies, hover around them and zap them with its element. You don't have to do anything really, just throw it and leave it be. There's a number of different variants you can get, recurring which doubles the grenade count with the addition of Merv Grenades, Mitosis which triples it, and Merv Tacular which adds the most Merv Grenades to the Onslaught. There are others, but those are the main three. You'll want the one that provides the most hits, and recurring is one of the best for that, although Merv Tacular is good too. Overall, it's a great grenade, perfect for proccing abilities and inflicting status effects at the same time. Moving on now to the Ghast Call, a grenade exclusive to the Halloween event, but can drop from the loot skulls during the Valentine's event as well. The Ghast Call is a grenade that tears through not just armor, but anything. After impact, a swarm of acid skulls will unleash and hunt down your enemies. Throwing a bunch of these will literally blanket the screen with lost souls, causing absolute havoc. It does more damage than most and provides great support while mobbing. It comes in a couple of key variants, Cloning, which will double the amount of skulls, and Vindicator, which is the same thing, but with 20% more damage. That's definitely the one you want, and it's a perfect explosive support whenever you're looking to upscale the carnage you cause. Now for the It's Piss, a non-elemental grenade which can only be dropped by Sloth, who you fight around here in Conrad's Hold. It's Piss isn't your regular chuckable explosive, no, it's Piss, Skag Piss I believe, but might even be from Greywort. Unfortunately, that's not explained in the lore. It's a unique grenade that debuffs your enemies whenever they're drenched in it, causing them to receive 20% more damage from all sources. It lasts for 6 seconds and is perfect for helping boost your damage. You can tell they're inflicted not by the smell, bandits always smell like that, but by the radiation like aura surrounding them. On top of that, it will also clear any status effects applied to your allies, which is a nice bonus if you have friends. It's not a grenade that you'll want for the damage it deals, but from the extra damage granted through its effect, and it's extremely useful both while mobbing or when taking on bosses. Moving on to the Fish Slap, a completely unique grenade exclusive to the Cartel event, which will be returning on June 24th. It strangely enough has an increased chance to drop from Fish Slap, but also drops from Tyrone Smallums. Ever wanted to feel what it's like slapping your enemies with a raw fish, or better yet, the fish that Tannis loves to ride? Well, now you can. Throwing this at your enemies causes some serious amounts of damage, even at level 57. And that's because it doesn't deal just regular old damage, but your character's melee damage, which allows for some crazy build possibilities and great synergy with the Groundbreaker Guardian rank. It always spawns with the spring mechanic, causing it to jump into the air like a spawned salmon and tail whip your enemies. Couple this with a 390 Psycho Stabber and you can cause some incredible amounts of damage, especially on Amara or Flak. Either way you look at it though, this is one seriously powerful grenade able to just disintegrate mobs, and even under leveled, has the power to one slap bosses. The light speed is next, the deadly grenade that can come in every element including none, and can only be dropped from anathema during the guardian takedown. The light speed is a grenade that bends space and time, teleporting to its destination before exploding and sending a barrage of shrapnel outwards. It's capable of blowing enemies apart in an instant. The projectiles it spawns on impact seemingly come out of nowhere and just rip through your target. They're not any old projectiles either, they're advanced and will turn at sharp angles to cut down your foes. For a grenade its damage is heavy and on modes can do some serious damage against tough opponents, proving it's worth not only in its ability to trigger effects, but also in the damage it deals. Before number 1 is uncovered, let's dive into some honourable mentions. First up is the Ringer, another new grenade added as part of the Director's Cut. 
it has an increased chance to drop from Hemoborus the Invincible and Dark Thirst the Minion. The Ringer has the potential to be an absolute explosive dream if it worked more than 20% of the time. Pressing the grenade button will have you bowl a spiky bomb at your enemies, but unfortunately most of them aren't strikes and find themselves rolling down the gutter instead. The hit detection is off by a long way, but you can still detonate it yourself for 50% less damage, but if you're doing that you might as well just be shooting them. Currently it's more of a hazard than anything else, which is a shame because it does have potential. Moving on to the Fastball, a legendary grenade that can come in any element including none, and has an increased chance to drop from Thunk that you fight around here in Conrad's Hold. The Fastball is your classic contact explosive, but you don't just lob it, you throw it with extreme force. Whatever's in your crosshairs is going to get hit with a ball of lead, forget the curveball Ricky, give him the heater. My guess is there is no detonation here, just the sheer speed at which it travels. It is a pretty standard grenade, nothing fancy, no special effects, but it is extremely fun to use. Pouting your enemies with it never gets old, and it does deal some surprisingly good damage. Number 1, where did it come from, where did it go, whatever happened to Cotton Eye Joe, it's the cloning maddening tracker, an epic rarity grenade mode that is best found for in vending machines. The best place to find them is in the spend opticon within DLC 1. The cloning maddening tracker is the go to grenade for Moe's, able to proc vampire for lifestyle, means of destruction for the ammo regen, any consecutive hits anointments and much more, but other characters can still use it in similar ways. It's another smart grenade similar to the Hex, splitting off into two during flight, which both spawn three Merv grenades, and they each impact your target up to three times. That's a total of 18 hits per grenade, which is a mountain of work. The damage it deals is also great, and it really is the best of both worlds. On Moe's, firing the Skag then has the potential to down you if you're using a high level version, but you can farm for a level 1 variant whilst farming vending machines as either a new character in someone's max level game, or if you're on console you can do it in split screen. This is a grenade that'll stack you up faster than anything else, and if you're on Moe's you can keep on chucking ensuring you stay alive and at the peak of your power. So that's all for this video, I hope you enjoyed it and learned of the top 10 best grenade mods in Borderlands 3. If you did, consider dropping a like or subscribing, and I'll catch you in the next one.